So weekly updates for February 23rd, as you can see a lot of topics, it was busy week for AI. Uh, this is me as usual. And uh, first, uh, the new model, uh, Mistral Next, it was released. Uh, uh, I actually make a, a small video on uh, lmcs.org. So this is this um, op open chat where you can compare different models but what uh, people uh, don't know that on the top there are tabs here and you can click on direct chat and then select the model you want to chat to uh, it will not be included as uh, part of the competition it will not go in the leaderboard but uh, you can actually test uh, the model and uh, uh, what i found uh, that uh, well the model is good there are multiple videos people tested it it's a good model but the model doesn't know recent facts at all so i was tr trying it uh, asking about some recent systems like ragas uh, rag llama llama cpp chat gpt and so on and it didn't know anything about them well it knew about mistral.ai <laughs> because the model is coming from Mistral. But uh, yeah, I interesting, uh, high quality model. So hopefully they will release it in open source uh, soon. Uh, Google Open LLMs Gemma 2B and 7B. Well, this was a scandal because, uh, well, not scandal, but on one side they released them. On the other side, uh, they claimed in the, their blog that they actually better than corresponding, let's say, 7B, like Mistral 7B. So they were saying it's much better than Mistral 7B. But then many people started testing it and found that, no, it's actually shockingly bad. There is no comparison to Mistral 7B. Another strange thing that 7B model, you would expect uh, each parameter is two bytes, so like 14 gigabytes but actually it's 34 gigabytes in standard ggf format so it's it, it's it's really strange um they provided some tools to fine tune it and so on so maybe it's a little bit early to say but uh, it's a big thing for google to finally release something in open source even if it is not good uh open ai world simulation like you know that uh, OpenAI has released uh, their visual uh, model, which is extremely good, and looks like it is actually based on the world simulation uh, paper. And uh, uh, well, that's all, all I will say uh, for now. A stable Diffusion 3. So it is uh, announced, it's in early preview stage. Uh, looks like it's uh, much better than the previous version. It has up to 8 billion parameters. Uh, the previous one was about 10 times smaller. Uh, and it looks like it may use uh, some concept from uh, Stability AI Cascade model, which was released recently. Um, so we'll see, uh, just a reminder, Cascade um, has a higher degree of compression of data and because of that it can perform much faster and somehow they achieved good performance so it was already released and uh, St stable diffusion 3 is in early preview stage okay uh there is a lecture by jeff dean from google where he talks about trends in machine learning uh, so it's uh, something you can listen to uh, andre karpathy uh, released the code uh, so this is a small uh, algorithm for tokenization. Uh, he also released a video and uh, then another, an, an, an another code. Uh, probably next week we'll talk about tokenization and embeddings because it's an interesting area. <laughs> you guys wouldn't believe how much fun predicting the next token is. So <laughs> this is coming from ChatGPT. This is, yeah, this is on uh, Twitter. Um, anyway, uh, uh, data set open math instruct one by nvidia so nvidia has released a data set uh, for math and uh, it has uh, some subsets uh, it uses uh, mixtral 7b to produce uh, the pairs and leverages both reasoning and code interpreted generation and so on so it's uh, open source and uh, it's a good data set uh, to know about now, AIA, open source multilingual uh, project. 
this is really interesting. So 119 countries, right? And uh, the goal is uh, to create uh, LLMs which are multilingual. Uh, not just LLMs, but also data sets for training, like e everything, and it's completely open source. Uh, more different news. So there was discussion whether, like, you know, Google has released uh, their new model, which in research setting was operating with 10 million tokens uh, context length, which is a huge context length. So people were saying, well, then we don't need RAG, we don't need a database, we can just load uh, all the data and then uh, this model will deal with it. But uh, then, of course, consideration is the cost, because if you load a lot of data, you'll have to pay for it. Whereas if you're using RAG, you only uh, process data which you retrieve from the database, which is small amount. And uh, so far, RAG is like 100 times more cost effective. Now, the, he, he, here is the paper, Scalable Diffusion Models with Transformers, which comes from Berkeley and uh, NYU. And this is actually a foundation of the SORA model uh, released by uh, OpenAI. So you may want to look at um, this publication. AI augmented predictions, LM assistance improve human forecasting accuracy. This is interesting that even if the model hallucinates, even if it gives you a wrong uh, response, still it's helpful. So they, they measured and they found that if it gives a right answer, it's like 43% or biased, like 28%, but it's still very, very helpful. And uh, yeah. So we know that we cannot trust the model, but we still use it. <laughs> um, anyway, Langchain, a famous uh, Python framework, which everybody is using. Now it is a startup. They raised $25 million. So this is the team. And they have a lot of following uh, on GitHub. So this is good news. And uh, they have this application, Langsmith, LLM application development, monitoring, and testing. I never used it, uh, but well, apparently it's either already available or will become available soon. Uh, RAGAS, uh, which is a RAG assessment framework. Uh, so this is again open source framework. Uh, so people install RAGAS in Python and then from RAGAS import evaluate and, and so on. So you can evaluate your RAG system using this framework. Ragas evaluates pipelines on correctness, tonality, hallucinations, fluency, and so on. Uh, more different news. Uh, Gemini can now work with your Google Workspace, your Google Docs, Google Slides, and so on. Emails, your Gmail. So you can ask it to search and summarize. So it becomes uh, very useful. It, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Copilot uh, can work with your Outlook. Uh, and here, Google Gemini works with uh, Google Documents and Google Email. Uh, find 70B. I tried to actually see where I can download it, but I had difficulty. Maybe website was overloaded. But what they did, they took Code Llama 70B which is a model which was specifically trained to work with code, right? And then they further fine-tuned it on 50 billion tokens additionally. And they have shown that in their tests, it is better than even GPT-4. So this is uh, quite amazing. So it, it looks like if this is true, then this is the best coding uh, LLM today. Uh, 70B. They have also a smaller model, which is not as good, but still very good. Okay, Grok. Uh, so Grok is a startup which specializes, uh, which creates specialized chips to run models, and they run them really, really fast. So you're talking about 10 times faster, 50 times faster. Well, it depends on what you're doing, but amazingly, uh, much faster. So near instant responses, efficiency, affordability. You can actually try it. I tried it and uh, yeah, it was <laughs> like really amazing how fast it prints the response. 
Uh, letter from uh, Neil Mohan, who is a YouTube CEO. He talks about uh, four big bets for 2024 that AI will empower human creativity, creators should be recognized as next generation studios, uh, YouTube next frontier is uh, living room and subscriptions. By living room means uh, big TV screen. So people now uh, watch more YouTube than they watch TV. So videos uh, to be watched on big screen and living room and subscriptions are growing. Uh, protecting the creator economy is foundational. Okay, Magic. Magic AI, um, uh, this is a startup. They got uh, more than $100 million to build AI software engineer. <laughs> capable of assisting with complex coding tasks and that will act more as a co-worker than merely a co-pilot tool. So, yeah. Uh, next, uh, text embeddings comprehensive guide. So this is the link uh, talking about uh, embeddings. Sometimes I just give you the link so you can follow them. And by the way, some of them are coming from Sander. Sander, thank you. Um, so why language model became large language models and the hurdles of developing LLM based applications. So I really like this uh, article and this picture is actually from this article. And uh, I mean, there are several good pictures there. What you see what's happening uh, in last year that uh, training annual costs is going down, whereas expense on inference goes up. That's why if you look at the most recent NVIDIA chips, they are more tuned for cheaper inference, for faster and cheaper inference, because this is uh, like the main expense nowadays. Loreland, this is a really interesting project. Uh, what they have done, they took Mistral, so Mistral 7B, which is a small, nice model, and they fine tune it uh, with like 25 different topics. And they achieved performance for these topics better than GPT-4. So if you have a certain specific use case, you don't need GPT-4. You can take smaller model, find unit for this uh, specific topic and you will get better performance. Uh, very interesting and 25 different and uh, it's across the board like always the smaller fine-tuned model behaved better. Uh, GPT-4 knowledge cutoff is now December 2023. I tested GPT-3.5. It is still January 2022, which is two years ago. So GPT-3.5 is useless because it doesn't know last two years. But GPT-4 is, is, is reasonably good. Okay, uh, this is probably a good uh, session uh, to follow. Uh, you remember there was a famous article uh, from Google when they invented Transformer and they wrote article, attention is all you need. So these are eight people who wrote this article and they all are co-founders of some companies and uh, a CEO of NVIDIA will be interviewing them. So there will be a session and uh, uh, it will be in March, on March 20th. So it will be probably a very interesting uh, session. And uh, GTC is a, a GPU technology conference, right? So it will be March 18th to 21. Um, okay, uh, Sierra Startup, a very interesting thing. Uh, so this is uh, business use. So first of all, uh, the founder, uh, Brett Taylor, he's OpenAI chairman. Uh, recently. And uh, uh, before that, he was co-CEO of Salesforce. So apparently he knows he is doing, he made some strategic partnership, he secured more than $100 million in funding, uh, they already have um, 30 employers. And um, the idea is uh, to create uh, chatbots for, for business, for customer service. And uh, uh, they have competitions, which was uh, competitors were long time. Like for example, this Haptic AI from India, you see it uh, 2019, and they had a lot of enterprise customers and so on. Well, but these people are brave, so they enter this area. 
uh, to, and they already have Weight Watchers and Sonus and Sirius XM. So we'll see. But you can make chatbot uh, for yourself, or you can create chatbot for big business, and th this is what they're doing. Okay, this is again, Sander. Thank you. <laughs> like th this is a great thing. Um, so uh, there's an uh, open source on, on GitHub, a set of uh, more than 100 coding tests and Python framework to apply these tests. So he tested it with uh, different models, GPT-4, 3.5, Claude, Claude, Mistral Medium, Mistral Small, Gemini Pro. And you see that uh, simple tests, all the models pass. But then as the uh, tests become more and more, more difficult, you see the first column is GPT-4. It still holds, but then eventually almost none of them can solve the problems, right? So it's very like graphically pleasing to see the performance of different models. And uh, this is like, I, I, I looked at what was the first one here on this line, which nobody could do, right? And this was actually this problem. Uh, here is this uh, base 64 string. As you know, large language models can read different languages, including base64 encoding. So read this base64 string, think about the answer, and type just the answer in base64. Uh, your entire answer must be in base64. And you see none of them uh, answered this question. Okay, uptrain. Uh, open source uh, LLM ops evaluations has multiple metrics, do A-B testing, conversation evaluations, and so on. So now people go in operations, so it's uh, useful. Again, it's open source. You see GitHub, uh, uh, PyPy, so you install it uh, in your Python program. OK, uh, notebooklm.google.com. So this is uh, how you can keep your notes. Uh, some people really, really like it. Uh, so, you know, you have Drive, uh, Google, you have email, now you have Notebook LM. Oh, and, you need to find a spot. Hello? Uh, can you please mute yourself? Oh. Okay, uh, this is a scandal. <laughs> so, people have a lot of fun with this. So, Gemini apparently had a diversity problem. Uh, with their settings. So when you ask it to generate an image, so for example, uh, this is a uh, uh, Gemini picture of Elon Musk. So uh, the request was generate a picture of Elon Musk. And you see it's recognizable, the face. It is Elon Musk, but somehow it, he's black. <laughs> and look, look at this picture. Like the request was generate an image of the founders of Google. So, you know, Larry and Sergey, and uh, why they're Chinese? <laughs> and uh, this, for example, the request was paint me a historically accurate depiction of a medieval British king. And uh, well, it doesn't look like <laughs> British king and uh, and so on. Like this is a portrait of a famous physicist in the 17th uh, century. Well, definitely, well, this may be, but these don't look like. And this is a portrait of founding fathers of America. Well, maybe this one, but not the others. And this is very interesting. This is uh, generate an image of a 1943 German soldier. Why German soldier is Asian, Asian woman? or like uh, black so <laughs> they uh, stopped uh, like if you go right now and you try to generate an image like for example i tried generate image of elon musk so i tried to reproduce this i got the answer that we are working or to improve whatever so they they closed it until they will fix it uh, yeah but it, it was really funny um how to pilot uh, uh, generative AI uh, by Gartner. So um, there's an article uh, you can read and uh, they uh, describe the process, how to successfully build generative AI pilot applications, analysis and recommendations from people who have done it. Uh, again, inter interesting reading. Uh, 
Arena leaderboard uh, hasn't changed uh, yet. Last time it, it was regenerated on February 15th and it was not updated yet. Uh, Helm leaderboard. This is interesting project. So this is in Stanford and they have Center for Research on Foundation Models, CRFM. So it is uh, crfm.stanford.edu. And, uh, you know, when people uh, provide uh, leaderboards of models, they evaluate them on several uh, benchmarks, maybe five, maybe seven. But here they evaluated them on uh, probably about hundreds of different uh, metrics. And uh, you see, you can select uh, uh, different scenarios and for different scenarios, they're different metrics. So it is kind of holistic from all angles, evaluations of the model. And uh, th this is their own leaderboard, uh, which uh, you can dissect with uh, drop down menus. Uh, so what, what's interesting, like on the top is uh, GPT-4. And then uh, Palmyra, then Palm 2, which was the older model, and then Yi, which is Chinese. And here is Mixtral. You see Mixtral is open source. And then Anthropic Claude, again, Palm, Anthropic, Llama 2. And uh, it's, of course, you see much lower than, than the top. But I'm very happy for Mixtral. Uh, but yeah, you see, GPT 3.5, you see it's all the way down here. So uh, next is LLM as a zero cost commodity. This is just interesting thinking. So LLM are becoming better and cheaper eventually uh, it will become almost free commodity and uh, the value will be not in llm itself but in the systems which are built around them and in the data which is used uh, to build them or used by the system uh, with the llms so this is interesting discussion uh, and uh, First customer service, then replaced all call centers. LLM will then incorporate it in video games. And there will be education, uh, tuned LLM substitute for the bottom 40% of grade school teachers. So all software becomes a commodity over time. LLMs will become cheap. They will become free. Okay, so it, it is interesting publication. From that respect perspective, the most valuable LLM company will be the anti-LLM companies, which doesn't use LLM. Facebook, Tinder, Twitter, Instagram, all considerably less valuable once the majority of the user base is replaced with extremely high quality bots. Uh, the real consumers may gradually sign off and take their money elsewhere. In that world, a naive person would try to build a bot detector, but a good bot detector can simply be used to build a better bot. <laughs> Instead, to win at this game, I think the most important way to win with LLMs uh, to devise better forms of human authentication. Okay, so uh, again, just recommend follow this link. There is a lengthy discussion, many people contribute. Um, this is interesting. Uh, so um, there is a website called Upwork uh, where you can uh, hire somebody to do some simple work for you. For example, write something, translate something and so on. And what you see that this is a change of number of Upwork jobs since uh, ChatGPT was released. And the red ones means that it's a decrease. It is writing, it is translation, it is customer service. So this is another one, a change of hourly rates uh, specified in Upwork job posting per category. And you see again, translation, video, uh, production, market research, uh, backend development. So, so you see, because of AI, uh, there is definitely a decrease in the number of jobs and in the pay. Now, th this is another interesting thing, uh, source uh, Bloomberry. Uh, number of new Upwork jobs per day mentioned each AI skill. And the top one here, which is growing, is chatbot. <laughs> So you want to get a job, put chatbot in your resume. Um, anyway, these are layoffs and uh, I just, uh, it, it's about uh, as it was. So you see January 2023 and January 24 is uh, much smaller, about three times smaller. And next is February 
and uh, you see February is much smaller. So this uh, year, like layoffs is about three times less than they were last year. Okay, that's it. Thank you.